In this video, I'm going to go over the functions of the output port on the FED3. Depending on when you purchased it, your FED3 may have a BNC connector directly on it, or it may have this newer 3.5 millimeter connection. Um, they're exactly the same, and if you'd like the BNC connection, um, you can use a little adapter like this to plug it into the 3.5 millimeter. Um, we switched to this one basically because when there's not something connected, it's just a little more streamlined, um, but they function exactly the same. So how do we use it? How do we send pulses out of the Fed3? So if I go over here to the Fed3 library and to the wiki, we can see all the functions that we have um, available to us. And there's these ones down here from the BNC port. And there's really three functions. I'm gonna go over two of them today. There's um, the BNC delay or BNC and a pulse generator function. Um, so BNC is kind of the simplest function. It lets you send square waves out. It's very simple and convenient if you just wanna say you know, blink on LED twice or something. And what I'm going to do here is plug this one in, and then I'm going to plug it in here to a cable that's connected to this function generator, or sorry, to this oscilloscope, so um, you can watch what's going on. So if I go to the Arduino IDE, I've opened the fixed ratio one example. That's in examples. Fed3 programs fixed ratio one. And we're just gonna put some play around in the Fed3 write so we don't have to deal with the, um, the feeding function and all that. We'll just say, if I write poke, let's log it and then let's, um, let's send some things. So the first one would be the Fed3 BNC. So every time we send a write poke, the way this function works is it asks for the delay or the pulse width and then how many times. So let's send 100 milliseconds one time. And go down here and we'll flash this code over. All right, so that's flashed over. And now if I go on the right poke, and I poke this, we'll get a 100 millisecond pulse. The scale on the oscilloscope at the moment, it's plus two volts per box, so we see it's about a three volt pulse, um, and it's lasting for one box length. To get a little bit more information about the precision of this, I've now Turn this down to one millisecond per box. And we can watch the beginning of the pulse and you can see that it's rising almost immediately. We can uh, turn it all the way down to, let's try five microseconds. Um, it's almost, it's still, that's five microseconds per box on the oscilloscope and we're not even detecting it. So the rise time here. So if I get down to about one microsecond, you start to see the rising curve. If I get down to 100 nanoseconds, you can see um, that this, is, this pulse is taking about 100 nanoseconds to, to rise. So very, very precise. And then just to show you how this works, if we go, let's say we do two pulses at 100 milliseconds. And I'm going to have to flash this over again. All right, that's done uploading. Now if I do this, see we get two pulses. So in practice, we often use this function um, for synchronizing with external equipment um, and telling it what happened. So I might say something like, when a right poke, I'd like two one second pulses. On a left poke, I'll do one, one, one millisecond pulses. And then after the pellet is removed, I'll do three. And then when the animal does the task, if I'm synchronizing with fiber photometry or something, later on we can just pull out, oh, there was one pulse, there, that means a left poke, there was two pulses, that was a right poke, and then three pulses means he took the pellet. So now let's look at this pulse generator function. It's like BNC, but it has one more argument. We can set the pulse width, the frequency, and the repetition. So it no longer just has to be a square wave. We can say, I'd like 20 millisecond pulses with 100 milliseconds in between, um, and I'd like that to go 10 times or something like that. So let's grab the example here, pulse generator. And I'm going to put that in right in my FR1 and then flash that over. All right, so I'll flash that over. So now when I do a right poke on here, we see that we get 20 pulses. If I zoom in on the scale here, let's give it 10 milliseconds per box. You'll see those, 20, those pulses are in fact 10 milliseconds long. Um, and there's going to be a 50 millisecond or 40 millisecond gap after it, 50 millisecond period, giving us the 20 hertz. Um, and because we saw that we can 
It's got about 100 nanosecond resolution or something. We can go pretty fast. We could do easily, let's do one millisecond pulses um, at 200 hertz, and let's just do 10 of them. So that's flashed over now. Here we're looking at 50 milliseconds per box, and you can see those 10 pulses are very fast. Let me put it down to one millisecond per box. We see that we get these little one millisecond pulses. with five millisecond or four millisecond gaps in between. So that's how we use the output port on the Fed 3.